Hi, Anne. It's great to be with you today. Thank you. It's nice to be with you, Carolyn. Yes, Ann Kelly, you are part of a group that's called Kits for Kids that is run as a charity through your church and also a lot of wonderful volunteers who help out with this. And I'd really like our listeners to find out about this, anybody especially who loves to sew or wants to help in any other way. So tell us about Kits for Kids. You've been around for quite a while. Well, Kids for Kids has been around, this is the 17th year, and we've gone through a number of leaders, and currently there are three of us that are working together to buy and schedule and sew, and the thing that, the thing that started us is that there are a lot of school kids who don't live in their own family homes. Mm-hmm. They're unhoused. They might be in someone else's house or a car or a tent. And in that situation, it's really hard to have access to all of the hygiene products that you need. You need laundry, soap, you need shampoo, you need paper towels. So 17 years ago, the Smiths in our church started trying to work with the Family Access Network people in the schools to see what could we do, what would be the most helpful thing to do. And they came up with a shopping list, and we're still using the same shopping list. It has been really effective. We also thought that it would be nice to sew bags, fabric bags, that we put the products in, and then later they can be used for lots of other other things. I made up some bags like that and gave them to my grandkids, and they use them for overnights. And you can use them for a laundry bag. Or when when you don't have your own house, you you – need storage all the time so we kind of we try to make them pretty so that people can enjoy them and so they can feel that someone cares about them and so during the summer we put together these kits and at the end of the summer the fan people come with trucks and take the bags and put them in storage and they take them out during the year and give them to families. Sometimes they send them home with kids on the bus. Sometimes the parents come in. Sometimes the fan advocates go to the home and take them. We have made as many as a thousand some summers this wow. summer. Yeah, that's quite a few. And this summer, we're only doing 500. So that is a a whole lot more doable, although we have always made our goal. And we really think that it's an important and fun thing. People in the church take a bag and take their grandkids shopping at the Dollar Tree mostly and fill the bag. and bring it back. And I I did that with my grandkids. So we would go and pick out which bag do you like and take them. And it, it, it can be a family event. Sure. I think that sounds like a great thing because then it helps young children to see the value and also just the feel good kind of reaction to doing something nice for somebody else. And especially when they know it's going to another child. Yes. I've always thought that that was a a really good thing. We try to get people to take the bags individually or as a family. But we also do bag fills where we have donations of, of funds. Then we will buy in bulk. And we like to put together 200 in a throw 
And that's, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's quite doable. We can do that in an hour. We can put kits together, 200 of them. And that, that's really good. We have some of our bags go to Harney County. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Some go to Lapine or Madras or Culver, Redmond. Pineville does their own. They came over oh. and visited with us. Oh, must be 10 years ago. And we talked about what we do and they said, okay. And they, and as far as I know, they have the same shopping list, but they, they do their own. So that's, that's a good thing. Yes. Well, from your description of what your group does, it sounds to me like you have need of people that are capable of doing different things. Some of them, of course, would be sewing Mm -hmm. and others would be donating so that there's money to buy the materials and others of them would go shopping maybe with somebody in their family or, or on their own. So, first of all, how many people do you have that are doing sewing of these kits in the summer as a rule? Well, I would say maybe as many as as 10 people make a significant number. But some people come and get just a couple and take them home and fill those instead Mm -hmm. of taking a finished bag to, to take home. I have one friend who... I think she sews two or three a day. Wow. (laughs) We put together kits, which have all the pieces. Oh, okay. So she takes a box of those kits, and she puts together two or three a day of of those until gardening kicks in. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Well, and you showed me a lot of the pieces that you have personally. So you must have people who were doing the cutting of, of all this material to the correct size and specifications so that then people can take them and either work on them at home or come and work together as a group on these kits in sewing them. That's right. We're going to, in June, we're going to have three sewing days on Thursday mornings. And those are going to be on the 8th and 15th of June from 9.30 to 12 o'clock at the Ben First Presbyterian Church. And so the the kits are, are already cut and together. We pin them together and so they just can take it and and go, you know, take out the pin and then they have the pieces and they just... Right. And and we have instructions. We have okay. on the at the church we have a table that has kits for people to take home and instructions for how to make it into a bag. We have bags and then we have a shopping list and they're all on the table. They are just as just when you come in the church. And so you, anybody could come in and take a bag and shopping list. Go and do it. And this is, yeah, this is at Ben First Presbyterian. So I'm, and that's on 8th Street, isn't it? Just across the street from the high school, from Ben High. Actually, it's 9th. You oh, know, 9th. 8th, oh, okay. 8th Street becomes 9th at the roundabout. As it crooks. <laughs> yes, it does. And would people be able to come and pick up those components or directions or whatever any day of the week? Or are they only out on the table on Thursdays? They can they can come Sunday through Thursday. The church is not open Friday, and I don't know Saturday. Saturday. So mm-hmm. yes, they could right. come. Well, surely you must have several people who are doing the cutting out along with you. I couldn't imagine being able to cut that much stuff without getting a, a cutting hand cramp. <laughs> oh well, it it is fun, and people do. There are other people that cut, yes, there are. There, they, that they help out as well, right. Uh-huh. And all of this is 
just such a wonderful commitment to our community. And yes, we are getting more and more people whose children are in great need of these things. So it's nice to have that as an option for our schools. And of course, FAN has always played a huge role in helping with identify and contact the families that need these pretty badly. Isn't that right? It is very true. FAN is a great organization. Yes, yeah, they have been for a number of years in this school district. I noticed on your web page about the kits for kids that you figure that each bag can be filled with about twelve to fifteen dollars in products. So if a person wanted to donate money, of course they could go on the web page too and look for a place where they could donate. And the website address for Ben First Presbyterian, do do you know that right offhand? No. I oh, don't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking that up, and it looks like it says bendfp.org, and the F and the P stand for First Press. Yeah. org, and then your group is listed under worship, I believe. Is that right? I would think it would be under mission. Oh, under mission. Okay. Well, they might have to take a look for that. But yeah, there's there's a way for them to get to that. And then they can sign up to help out, or they can decide they want to donate. And I even opened up the donate button. And it when you do that from the kits for kids segment of the First Presbyterian website, it goes directly to kits for kids so a person doesn't have to be hunting around for that and they can go online and give if that's how they feel they can best contribute to this so and yes yeah and so you sew every single week for a while you did you say you started in june (laughs) i sew all year that's uh, is my part-time job. <laughs> right, but the kits themselves are, are sewn oh. and assembled and ready for people to start getting in gear to fill them up so that the schools can have them first thing in the fall, right? Right. We We have our kickoff right about now. This is way close to the beginning. Uh-huh. And, and halfway through August, the fan people will come and pick them up. Uh So we have the whole summer. Good. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to have this interview with you now, because I hadn't been told you were really starting to gear up for the summer. So all of that work that people can see is crammed into just a couple of months, June and July and part way into August. So it's Uh great to have a bunch of people. When, When you work as a group to sew the bags, do do people come to the church? Is there a way to set up there, or is it all done individually or in small groups in your homes because there's a sewing machine? Well, it takes portable sewing machines if you're going to go together as a group. So we're going to have three Thursdays when people come and do it at the church. Sometimes people have done it as a group at home but mostly it's it's mostly individual people you know just take a take home three or four and sew them up it takes about i can do one in 20 minutes from (laughs) from a kit to a bag in 20 minutes well, so. that's nice because I have absolutely no aptitude for sewing. I'd have to say <laughs> I would be no good except for maybe taking them out to to fill them up or to oh, you know, being able to contribute <laughs> with the <laughs> materials. I notice you have kind of a separate page too that is another portion of the kits for kids, and that is providing the basics for homeless youth. And I wonder if that's a little bit different. Do you, I think that that is geared towards more the middle school, high school age kids, or is this for any of them? I'm not sure what you're, what you're seeing. Possibly it's loft, cascade family services. Uh huh. And our church does support that, but it's not kits for kids. Doesn't do anything. 
for them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see that there are three women who are mentioned on this page, too, to contact about that, and it it is, does not include your name. So it must uh-huh. be a whole different group that's part of the church work that they're they're trying to make sure that is done for our community. So, well, Anne, you agreed to allow your email to be shared with people yes. so they can contact you if they're interested. What is your email? E E K M R at Benbroadband dot com. All right. That well good. That's that's one that if they see it or or you know listen to this again, they can quickly write that down and we'll make sure to repeat that again before the end of our interview. Also, if they go to the Bend First Presbyterian webpage, they could contact the office, the church office, and get messages to you through them, too, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah, that would be fine. Yes, yes. And let's see, I think let's. I'm going to look at that because we can also share that their phone number at the church office at Ben Pres- First Presbyterian is 541-382-4401. So that's another way that they can find out how to get in touch with you. And And the church office is open, you said, Sunday through Thursday? Yes. Yes, and right. there's, there's a table in the in the commons right inside the door that has the stuff on it. So, and they can just drop you in any time and pick things up off of that table. They can. <laughs> it might be nice to wave to the secretary so she yeah. <laughs> so she realizes they they're okay to do it, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I noticed that the office is closed from noon to 1 p.m. Does that mean that the church is locked up during that hour or it's just that the secretary is not in? Do you I, know? I'm, I don't know for sure. Oh, I think okay. it, might, it might vary. Better better to be not trying to go I, in. I was going to say, yeah. Remember, <laughs> noon to 1 is probably not the ultimate time to go in and try to get in touch or find out about any of this and become involved with it. So people have three choices. They can either sew or maybe even cut pieces for right. the kits. They can sew the kits together during the summer. They could volunteer to pick them up and fill them up. And, oh, and there is a list that you have for things that should go into the bags, oh, right, yes. to, right, to make it uniform. So right. if they pick up a bag, are those lists right there along with the bags so people right. can They're know? Right, on the table. Yeah. Good. All right. So, yeah, that's the second way. So either cut out pieces, sew the bags together, pick them up and fill them up, or they can pick them up to deliver somewhere, or they can also donate online to help out with that. Yes. Sounds like a great thing. How many years, Anne, have you been involved with this group? Oh, I've probably been involved about 14, but they started, this is the 17th year. Wow. So you've been in on the ground floor and keep it rolling all of these years just to make sure that those things are available. And we thank you for that. as It's a wonderful gesture of kindness and also generosity. Well, thank you, Carolyn, and thank you for getting the word out. Oh, glad to do it, yes. And we're going to repeat your email one more time so that people can maybe write that down if they didn't catch it the first time. Okay. E-E-K-M-R at Bend Broadband. Yes, dot com. com. Right. And otherwise they can go to the Bend First Presbyterian webpage too and be able to get some information off of that. So thank you, Anne. I'm so glad we had a chance to talk and I'm looking forward to people hearing about this. So if they want to do something for you, they'll know how to do that. Well, thank you, Carolyn. That's great.